Hey, what's up, family? Welcome to Ask My Eyes. Where we challenge you to stop playing and start pushing. This right here is my lovely wife, Yana. And this right here is my oh so debonair husband. Thank you. I use a... <laughs> All right, y'all, we have a question. We have lots of questions, and we're going to do this one right here, right now. All right, this one says, hey, guys, love the show. I have a question I'd like to pose. How does one communicate an issue with someone who is stubborn or quick to anger? Verbal aggression is a lot of the times used as a barrier to deflect an issue that needs to be addressed. Serious issues as well as the minor stuff, difficult to penetrate even with persistence. Mm. Tips? Do you have some tips, I ye say, any y'all? <laughs> hey, y'all, check this out. So, so when it comes to um, verbal aggression and, um, you know, attempting to deflect in a relationship, you know, oftentimes we enter into a posture where we become defensive because we feel like somebody um, is attacking. So you mentioned that, you know, persistence, um, when persistence is present, which to me, it signifies that you're attempting to really get in there, resolve the issue, uh, peel back the layers. Minor and, stuff and, and yeah, major and stuff. trying to figure some too. stuff out. Yeah. So, so, but even with that being said, um, again, people resist and become defensive when they feel as though they're, they're being attacked, when they feel like they're being infringed upon, when mm -hmm. they feel like it's not necessarily safe to expose or just be vulnerable and just be themselves. So, what I would say first and foremost, the, the, and, and it's actually probably the only thing that needs to be done. Um, people come out, people express and expose themselves. People share what's on their heart and on their mind when they feel safe, when they feel comfortable to do so. So the number one priority, I would say, is to be that you create that safe space in the relationship so that he or she feels comfortable um, expressing whatever it is. They don't feel the need to become defensive. Now, that does not mean that there won't be situations where even if you attempt to create that safe space, that this particular person may still feel agitated because they've interpreted what you've done in the wrong way. That's very much possible, but again, ultimately, if you can create the atmosphere, the safe space for them to express their thoughts and feelings, for them to be willing to communicate, to not feel the need to be defensive, then you'll be able to have more productive conversations that way. And so the other thing that I want to add here is that there are some people who are predisposed to push back. Mm. Okay? So, mm. so I know this. Because I can be that person. I'm like, what, what, what'd you say? So, uh, come again? Right? So, so, there are folks who are like that. And that can be for a number of reasons. And oftentimes, you know, folks who have a hard time dealing with criticism, they often are very critical of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps they had a parent or a caregiver when they were younger who was very critical. Or maybe they perceived that they were critical. And so, they carry this thing called... Um, the, the, the inner voice, this, this, this other voice, um, that I would say is not the, the true and genuine voice. It's not the God voice inside of us, but it is this voice that's, you know, in their ear, um, that makes them second guess themselves, that has them criticizing themselves, not thinking the best of and for themselves. And so I just want to kind of give you that background because when you have someone who is kind of a persistent pushback person and you can't really give them hardly no feedback, minor stuff, big stuff. You know, they're usually dealing with that. So here is another really big tip. Number one, create safety. That has to be your overarching goal, mm -hmm. right? But one of the ways that you do that and that you create safety is you don't just pull up, you don't push, push up on a sister. Mm -hmm. You don't just roll up on a brother. Mm -hmm. You don't just come up on him. You don't drive with, hey, hey, well, 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 back up. Who are you and what do you want? <laughs> so so if, if we know that about, about people in general, then very specifically in your relationship, when you want to have a conversation where you are going to say something or you'd like to be able to get into something that the other person, you know them well enough now to know they might have a problem with it, then you need to, as we have said in other videos, you need to get permission mm -hmm. to give some feedback. If you just give permission, right? And what does that look like? That means this. Look, look. Hey, what's up, boo? What up, boo? <laughs> so look. Something has been on my mind, and I mean, I have to be honest, it's really been bothering me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking that right now might be an okay time for you, but I'm really not sure. So I'm just going to give you a heads up, but I really want some permission to give you some feedback. And I don't know if, like, if this is a good time or if we need to come at it again later, but, you know, can I, can I holler at you right now? I suppose so. Okay. That's how you do it. 
<laughs> it could also went like this. Hey, you know, what's going on? I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see you at the end of a hard day. I mm. missed you today. I miss you too, baby. I know, we chilling, the kids in the bed. And for real, something's really on my mind, boo, and I really want to um, talk to you about it. And it's, it's, it's a little difficult, and you, you know, it's going to probably be a little difficult for you too. But I don't know if right now is a good time. Is this, this, can I holler at you for a minute? Yeah. He just messed it up. <laughs> if I, if I, 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 but, but hold up, though. I like the way. I like if the I just, way. If I said Aura can go like this, then you're supposed to say no this time. <laughs> no, no, no. You no. messed up the situation. <laughs> no. I, so, so here, let me point Ooh. this out. You knew I was so, going, so right? I did. So I did that intentionally. <laughs> I did that intentionally because I wanted to point out a couple of things. So the energy, look at the energy that took place in that exchange. Oh, man. You know, my wife, she said, hey, baby. Oh, I should have changed my energy. Yeah, the second no, one. No, because the person was, might was, say no regardless. Yeah, I know. It's a Because I know I will. You come again, all kind of correct. I still say no. Yeah, <laughs> but pay attention to the <laughs> fact that, you know, when, when she came in me um, the second time, I actually felt, boy, you just going to drink the wine like that? To the wine to the head? <clears throat> Oh, I'm just drinking this. Right. <laughs> um, so you want to make sure that you 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 um, there's some element of compassion that's present that you're sensitive to the space that your partner is in when you're approaching them about whatever it is that you want to share. It is important to ask for permission because yes, your partner can say yes, they can say no, they could be like get the hell up out of here or whatever it may be. But when you ask for permission, um, then it gives them the opportunity to invite you into their space. Yes. Okay. So he was supposed to say no that time, but anyway, you get it, right? Like you just have to ask him. And, and if, in in our relationship, do I have permission to give you some feedback? Is mm-hmm. a phrase that we we that's a cue for us. We know. Yeah. Okay, that means that we it's about to be rough. We getting ready to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's about to be rough, or <laughs> it ain't about to be rough because I'm about to tell him no. Mm-hmm. This ain't a good time. <laughs> but I know it may be rough within you know the next uh, few hours or the next day because I'm not going to leave him hanging, being as though he can't correct. I'm gonna say yeah, we can we can have that conversation. So you mm-hmm. set it up in such a way that it, it allows for the person to get ready psychologically. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it allows them to even train their minds without them even realizing it uh, and train their emotional reactions in such a way that, you know, it, it starts to discipline you mm-hmm. because now you, you're already ready. You're getting mm-hmm. ready. Um, and you ain't just rolling up on somebody. There was a third thing that I was going to tell you. Uh, you had a little bit too much. That more. wine, that wine, y'all. Um, the third thing, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go. It's about asking the question. No, can you, don't talk, because you're making me not remember. Wait a minute. Don't do that. It's distracting me. Um, getting permission. <laughs> Come on now, boo. Wait a minute. Getting permission and. So people are just supposed to watch you think? Shh, shh. Because it's good, y'all. Hold on, hold on. I know, I know, I know I'm taking a long time. Oh man! See, I had it. I had it. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't remember it. I think it, you know, maybe I did have a little. The wine is making me forget. But um, at the end of the day, um, you just have to persist, and you have to to recognize that you can model for that person. Um, I have been a hothead in our relationship sometimes. You mm-hmm. know, just a few times. Really. And this brother right here, he's a model for me. You know, you can't have two hotheads. It doesn't work, right? So people um, attract. They're opposite in many ways so that they can learn what they need to learn. Um, and, and he's modeled for me. So just model, um, you know, get permission um, and um, understand be the cautious need. and be Un- cautious about your tone and yeah. about your energy. Yeah, but understand the need. What is his or her need to be defensive? What are they trying to protect? Why, where did that come from? You know, what, what situations or what experiences have they had that led them to a space where they feel the need to always be on guard, to be quick to respond, to buck, to not necessarily be willing to receive feedback? And so when you understand that need, ah, and you can better approach them and be, um, you know, more willing to create that safe space, don't try to push me through here. I'm, I'm feeling you. Be willing to create that safe space for them so that they can create a new need and a new experience in the relationship. Mm-hmm. And... Here's what you can do. When you want to give that feedback, uh, before you start, in any feedback that you give, affirm, validate the person. Because if we go back to what I talked about in terms of the fact that the person oftentimes may not be open and they're defensive because on the inside, they already may have some issues. They may not feel enough, like they're good enough. They may feel like they don't measure up. I mean, even the Mm -hmm. most confident person, right? They can feel like that. And so that's why they kind of come out with that energy if you affirm them and say, don't wrap me up, don't do that. He's going to do one like this. No, don't do that. 
Um, <laughs> if you affirm them and validate them in that area, um, for example, my husband has given me feedback, right, sometimes about some of the housekeeping. Mm-hmm. Have you not? Mm-hmm. And been that successful most of the time. But in the few times that he has been successful and giving me some feedback, um, what has been helpful for me is that he says, babe, I want to share something with you. And look, I just want you to know, I need you to hear me. I think you do a great job with A, B, and C. I don't really have a problem with that. I'm just different, and I like to see things a little bit different. But this is not me coming at you about how you do things. This is just me sharing another way because, you know, I'm just, I'm, I just have a different way of doing things. But I think you do a great job on blah, blah, blah. He's already affirmed me. He's already validated me. So then when I hear him talking about housekeeping stuff and cleaning up, I'm not saying, uh... Wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. What is, is he about? To, is he really trying to go? On, you judging me? You know, you, you you trying to go on what I do? I mean, I can't even hear what you're saying because I'm feeling mm-hmm. attacked, right? Um, and so I just want to make sure that I, I lifted. I wanted to wanted to make sure that I lifted that up. Good. Baby. Validate and affirm <laughs> the person um, because when you can validate and when you can tell somebody what they do well, then they will be much more open to hearing you give them feedback about what they can get stronger in. At the end of the day, you can't do none of this if you don't. Stop playing. <laughs> and start pushing. Start pushing. <laughs> Peace, y'all.